Today's video is from The Vampire Diaries. Damon Salvatore is without a doubt one of the most popular characters from the Vampire Diaries series. Sure, why wouldn't he be? He's a major character that features in multiple storylines and is genuinely likeable as a vampire. Now, something I feel we can all agree with is the fact that Damon truly embraces who he is. He enjoys being a vampire, and he really grows as the seasons progress. However, with Damon's growth comes a lot of errors. Well, not so much errors, mistakes more like. Come to think of it, it can't really be a mistake if Damon actually wanted to do it. These are more like actions. Consequential actions to be precise and I've found 10 of them that are so bad, they're pretty much unforgivable in most people's eyes. However, that's not the case with the Vampire Diaries, where you could basically kill your best friend's brother, your mother, your father, your cousin, your daughter, your son, kill all your distant relatives while still being forgiven by the end of the episode. On a serious note, here's 10 unforgivable things that Damon Salvatore has done, and we'll kick it off with number 10, Killing Uncle Zack. It's quite easy to forget that Damon was the early antagonist in season 1, and he certainly behaved like one. Killing Zack was just Damon's way of showing that he didn't comply with anyone's rules but his own. The thing is, Zack didn't have an issue with Damon being back in Mystic Falls, or even being a vampire, as long as he didn't hurt anyone in the process. He knew how reckless Damon was, but he stood up to him anyway, which resulted in his death. It was also another way for Damon to pile more misery onto Stefan, something we'll get to a little later in the video. Number 9. Tricking Lexi, then killing her. It's noteworthy to mention that there was quite a number of years between Damon tricking Lexi and then actually killing her, but Damon did them both and here's how and why he did what he did. During the late 70s, Damon encountered Lexi in New York while his humanity was switched off. He spent six months, an entire six months, getting Lexi to fall in love with him before finally completing his plan when he left her on top of the roof of a bar without her daylight ring, hoping the sun would finish her off. Unfortunately for Damon, it didn't, but he finished the job over 40 years later when he staked her in order to take any possible spotlight of himself and Stefan returning to town right around the time people started going missing. In reality, Damon killed Lexi to cover himself, get closer to the sheriff in order to infiltrate the town council, and most importantly, to hurt Stefan. After all, Lexi was Stefan's best friend and the only consistent thing he had in his life. Number 8. Compelling Caroline and Controlling Her I wonder how many people forget just how badly Damon treated Caroline when they first met back in season 1. He controlled her, manipulated her, and compelled her to do whatever he wanted her to do. She became a blood bag, a sex object, a piece of arm candy to tide his boredom over while he made his play to get closer to Elena, which was of course in order to try to hurt Stefan. Do any of you see how hurting Stefan ties into a lot of these things? Don't worry, I'm getting to it. Damon's treatment of Caroline is downright inhumane and it's very difficult not to feel sorry for her. Number 7. Promising Stefan an Eternity of Misery Here it is in at number 7. Promising Stefan an Eternity of Misery. This is literally the reason for why Damon was so awful back in season 1 and that was to make his brother's life a living hell. Despite his love for his brother, Damon loved Catherine more and really believed that she'd chosen him after feeding him her blood. He was furious to learn that she'd chosen to turn Stefan too. After believing Catherine to be dead and feeling like he had nothing left to live for, Damon was not going to complete his transition. He didn't want to, he wanted to die. However, Stefan, quite forcibly I might add, convinced his brother to turn, despite Damon's repeated pleas and actually shows very early signs of his Ripper personality. Even afterwards, Damon was miserable without Catherine, so in exchange, promised his brother an eternity of misery for playing his part and making him who he was. Number 6. Neglecting Vicky Donovan after turning her into a vampire Vicky's misery as a vampire is quite overlooked in terms of how horrible a death it was on Damon's hands. Vicky was troubled from the very beginning and he was aware of that. 
Damon fed on her multiple times, took her to the Salvatore house where he used her for his own self-centered purposes, he manipulated her, fed her his blood and then turned her into a vampire. Despite all of that, he didn't want to put in the extensive effort needed to train Vicky to adapt to her new body and heighten the senses and emotions. When she got too much due to her inability to control herself, she was staked by Stefan after trying to kill Elena. Number 5. Acting out when he lost This isn't exactly one thing but several things that Damon would do whenever he didn't get his way or was the main feel like he was a reject or an outcast or unwanted. Any time he was put in a position of vulnerability after he genuinely showed concern, Damon would act out, go off the rails, hurt someone innocent, or push himself so far across the line that he would never again be welcomed back into the fold, therefore never being in a position to allow himself to care again. It was sort of Damon's defense mechanism. For example, after Elena rejected him, he let go of whatever humanity was left inside him and killed Aaron Whitmore with Enzo, which he believed would push Elena away for good. Number 4. Killing Zack's Pregnant Wife I put this in at number 4 because it really was one of the worst things Damon had done. Despite Zack's wife having such little screen time, she was still an innocent pregnant woman. Damon didn't actually have to kill her. He got his daylight ring back from Stefan, but still made the decision to kill Zack's wife anyway, which really shows just how loose the connection between Damon and his humanity truly was, even when it was turned on. Number 3. Snapping Jeremy's Neck in Season 2 this is one of Damon's worst moments from the entire series. It's a moment that I'm sure many of us shouted, don't do it, not Jeremy. Furious, hurt, and rather unstable after his rejection at the hands of both Elena and Katrin, Damon, in particular Damon fashion, pushes himself past redemption when he snaps Jeremy's neck. There's something about those words, it's always going to be Stefan, that sends Damon over the edge. But the real question that plagues everyone is, did Damon see the ring on Jeremy's finger? It's still causing debate to this day. Stefan says he did, Elena says he didn't, I'm here saying he broke Jeremy's freaking neck. That's bad enough. What do you guys believe? Did he see the ring? Let me know in the comment section below. Number 2. Stealing his brother's girl I think many of you were probably wondering at what number the love triangle was going to come in at. Damon did in fact steal Elena from Stefan and he even managed to blank out his guilt due to the fact it was indeed always Stefan. He lost out with Catherine and even when he did discover that she was still alive, she didn't want him. She didn't look for him. She always preferred Stefan. So when Damon finally gets his chance with Elena, he takes it and he takes her. The main reason being was that he embraced Elena for who she had become as a vampire, while Stefan tried to push her back to who she was as a human. Stefan was heartbroken, but made his peace with the relationship. It's noteworthy to mention guys that Stefan and Elena remained together in the books and she never actually ended up with Damon at all. Number 1. Leaving Enzo the number one worst thing for Damon to do was leave Enzo. It may differ for some of you, but this one resonated with me the most on this list. The two spend so much time together as a result of being experimented on by the Augustine doctors and build a very strong bond, determined to help each other escape. Enzo opted to give Damon his share of blood while taking mere drops for himself in order to allow Damon to build up his strength to break them both out. When the time finally came, Damon successfully managed to escape but couldn't break Enzo free from the red hot steel cage after the door slammed shut behind him and was fused closed. Fearful of getting put back into captivity, Damon didn't exactly look for other ways to free his friend. He refused to deal with the guilt of leaving Enzo behind and switched off his humanity as it truly was the only way he could walk away from the greatest friend he ever had. For the next 50 years, Enzo remained as the main test subject for the Augustine experiments. I'll never forget Enzo's face as Damon left. 
it was as if all hope had left him there and then. And there you have it everyone, that is the 10 worst things Damon Salvatore has ever done. Now I know some of you may disagree with me on the things that I've included on this list, maybe they're not in the position that you wanted them to be in, maybe some should rank lower than others. What I want you to do is to let me know your top 10 list in the comments section below. If you agree with me, well that's great. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps the algorithm help this video grow. And if you want to continue this journey with me on Vampire Folklore, then hit that subscribe button and I'll be seeing you all in the very next video.